When you look around the world today, it is so easy to get discouraged and to lose hope. But we need not lose hope because Our Lady has made a great promise to those who keep the first Saturday devotion. But first, as always, we start with our mission. With firm faith, I believe and profess everything that the Catholic Church teaches. But for many reasons, the fullness of that message hasn't been getting out lately. What if we, together, set out to learn the faith, to live the faith, and to share this faith, like missionaries of old? What would the world look like in a hundred years? To get this out of the way first, videos like this one regarding our Blessed Mother typically attract a lot of criticism from many of our separated brethren who call into question our devotion to the Blessed Mother. So I would like to just take a moment here at the beginning to reassure those viewers who greatly misunderstand and misinterpret so many Catholic devotions that what is good in this devotion is our interior reflection or prayer on the life of Christ in the scriptures, which will be illustrated later on in this video. At the most fundamental level, that's what Marian devotion is, an interior reflection on the life of Christ and her cooperation with God's will in salvation history. If I believe what many of you often say to me in the comments that, that all I've got to do is just, just believe in Jesus, well, first of all, that's, that's not even scriptural. You, you just made that up. But if I did believe that, I might be tempted to never pray or ever read my Bible because, hey, all I need to do is, is just believe in Jesus. But through devotions like this one, I will actually reflect on the whole life of Jesus and all of the things that he commanded us to do that are written in the Holy Scriptures. Now, many Christians simply at a pure ignorance overinterpret what it is that we believe. If what I've said here wasn't clear enough, I have an entire video on devotion to Mary, and I'll put it right up here on the card. Now, with all of that said, what is the significance of this first Saturday devotion? I remember when I first heard of this, I, I thought it was odd. Why would Our Lady ask for this specific observation? So first, a little background. On December 10th, 1925, Our Lady and the Child Jesus appeared to Sister Lucia Fatima to ask for the communion of reparation to her Immaculate Heart. In her hand, she held a heart which was pierced with thorns. Now explaining this image, the child Jesus said, have compassion on the heart of your most holy mother covered with thorns, with which ungrateful men pierce at, at every moment, and there is no one to make an act of reparation to remove them. And what are these thorns that pierce the heart of our blessed mother? They are the direct blasphemies and offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart. And here I want to make reference to those individuals that I just mentioned, who perhaps with good intentions, but through ignorance, leave so many hateful comments to Our Lady in the comments section of videos like this one. To those of you who may be listening, here I would just say, what you are misunderstanding is the doctrines that we proclaim about Our Lady are a result of what we believe about the divinity of Jesus Christ. For example, to say that she is the mother of God is also to say that Jesus is true God and true man, one person in two divine natures. You cannot philosophically separate those concepts. To say that she was immaculately conceived is to say that we all must be sinless and pure before we can approach the throne of grace. Therefore, his death on the cross was necessary and efficacious for our salvation. To defend her virginity is to proclaim that the Christ child's birth was miraculous and that he is the child savior promised in the old covenant. So the purpose of these doctrines is not to deify Our Lady, as some would accuse us, but it is to make specific claims about who Christ is. And to actively attack these doctrines is not just to attack Our Lady, but also the doctrines of our Lord Jesus Christ about who Christ is. Remember, the scriptures say, who do you say that I am? So to be clear, for all of you who don't have much philosophical training, but inadvertently misapply certain scriptures to suggest that Jesus had siblings or that Mary was not sinless, keep in mind, if you remove one of these doctrines, it would take an atheistic philosopher about two or three moves, just like a chess game, to supposedly disprove Christian doctrine and checkmate our entire creed. So be careful how you apply God's holy word and do not betray our Lord by attacking his mother and inadvertently denying who he is, the only begotten son of God, born of the father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begot not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Now with that said, the offenses and blasphemies that are represented in those thorns that are piercing the Immaculate Heart of our Blessed Mother, those blasphemies are the blasphemies against the Immaculate Conception, the blasphemies against her perpetual virginity, against her divine maternity, the instilling indifference and scorn and even hatred towards the Immaculate Mother in the hearts of children, which perpetuates this, this situation to the next generation. And finally, direct insults against images of Our Lady. So Our Lady makes promises. She makes a promise to those who observe this devotion. She says, Behold, my daughter, my heart encircled with thorns, with which ungrateful men pierce it at every moment by their blasphemies and ingratitude. Give me consolation, you at least, and make known on my behalf that I promise to assist at the hour of death with the graces necessary for salvation all those who on the first Saturday of five consecutive months confess their sins, receive Holy Communion, recite five decades of the Rosary, and keep me company for 15 minutes meditating on the mysteries of the Rosary with the purpose of making reparation to the Immaculate Heart. So surprisingly, it's very simple. Simply on the first Saturday of five consecutive months, go to confession, receive Holy Communion, pray five decades of the Rosary, and meditate for 15 minutes on the mysteries of the Holy Rosary. But we can't overlook the intention of this devotion, which is to offer reparation to the Immaculate Heart for those awful blasphemies. So practically speaking, what does this devotion look like? Now on the first Saturdays, I will go to Mass about 30 minutes early, and while I'm there, I'll first go to confession. And this is good because it's a monthly reminder that I need to go to confession, otherwise I might forget. And before I realize it, six months have passed and I haven't gone to confession at all. That's not good because over that period of time, I may habituate uh, sinful habits. This first Saturday devotion is always there to remind me that I need to go to confession. So after confession and before Mass, I will pray the Rosary. Now the hardest part of this whole thing for me was, was meditating on the mysteries for 15 minutes. I have a very short attention span and I can, I can never stay focused on anything. So what would happen most often is that I would spend 15 minutes meditating on, on what I was going to do after Mass or whatever football game was coming on later or whatever. But eventually it occurred to me that after Mass, all the sweet little old ladies, they would pray the Rosary. So I started to bring my Bible and while they were praying, I, I didn't join in them because I had already prayed the Rosary before Mass. Instead, while they were praying, I would turn to Luke chapter 1 and their prayers would help keep me focused and I would read whatever scripture it is that they were currently praying. That turned out to be a huge help for me. All of, all of a sudden I was able to get focused and really get, go deeper into, into prayer. Now, this devotion is a great way to advance in the interior life. Now, I highly recommend this devotion. And if you are currently stuck in a cycle of confessing the same sins over and over again, I spoke in this video in a great detail about how devotions just like this help break that cycle. Click here to watch that video and I will see you in the next one. Are you stuck in an endless cycle of confessing the same sin over and over again? You fall, you go to confession only to go right back and commit that very same sin again?